Get ready for this one. Legends Territory special thanks to the MLB Players Alumni Association behind the scenes, putting this all together. Scotty Braun, AJ Pruszynski, and this one's featuring a longtime big leaguer, a former rookie of the year, three-time all-star, gold glover, and then successful manager, including a World Series title. What year was that? I title? forgot. Me same. Forgot. I forgot. What but we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll we got time. It. We'll probably hear about it a couple times. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, Ozzy Guillen has arrived. <laughs> On Legends territory. Wait, hold on. Before we get into anything, dude, the, the rookie of the year, who was the rookie in like 83? They must have been awful. You won rookie of the year. And then also, oh, you made the All Star team three times? Like, damn, oh, who were they giving that shit away? Hey, they remember the All Star team had to pick one player for each team. And they feel sorry for me. Like, hey, come on, just green Aussie there. Uh, yeah, rookie of the year. Who I, I even remember? I, I, com I compete against Teddy Higuera. He went like 15, 16 games that year. Uh, no, no, you know, nowadays, before that trophy was very unique, important. It was very uh, uh, something people feel. Now, now, rookie of the year means anything. Rookie of the year, next year, you get, you get released, or you get traded, or you sent down to the minor league. Back then, it was a big deal. I don't think right now it's a bigger deal the way it was in the past. Mm. Think so? Yeah, I mean, listen, if Ozzy won it, it lost all. It lost all. That was the downturn? That was it. <laughs> Once 85 hit and Ozzy won, it was all. That was it. Everyone lost all respect for Rookie of the Year. Hey, hey, I know. I, hey, I, I'm not percent with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a one lucky year. That's it. After that, everything went downhill. <laughs> hey, Ozzy, I want to get right into your current career because part of this show is what – former players, managers, people in the game are doing now. And for you, obviously, you're still super ingrained in the game of baseball. And you get to talk and speak your mind, which I think is super important. You know what we've been doing here for a while now is just saying whatever the fuck we want whenever we want. If you watch most pre- and post-game shows of Major League Baseball games, they don't say much even when times are tough. Do you value that you're allowed to say whatever you want and give White Sox fans real talk because most commentators, you could be this big former ball player, made millions of dollars, I'm a Hall of Famer, and then you sit on a desk and you go, well, I know we're 20 games under, but there's this big prospect coming up, and we're going to be good sometime, and you don't have to do that bullshit. Well, you know, be honest, this job is, is harder than people think it is just because of that. If you say something about the players – they get sensitive. Managers, managers are the one that most take the heat. Uh, I know a lot of plays, a lot of ball clubs, for a fact, because I talk to guys, their friends are doing the same job I do with another clubs. They don't say what the, you know, what not to say. They say what not to not say. And that's kind of hard because sometimes do the voice of the fans. And all of a sudden you see something wrong. Sort of the first did, and in, in, in do not say on the show the way you should should be saying. Then all of a sudden you do not create people the belief you should be believed. If I hear Pedro Grifo say something stupid, I will say like, "What? What's going on? What kind of game we watching? Why are you doing?" I never criticized Pedro about the movement, you know, players move because manager got a different style. But I did criticize I hear after after after. Uh, after the game, when he says something like, oh, wow, we pitched good today. Uh, I like what you see. We continue to work. That's his fairest uh, word. We continue to work. We we go in the right direction. Next day, they lose 20 nothing, And he said, well, we pitched well. I said, well, how are you going to say they pitched well when they lose the game 11-2? What's pitching mean to you? And stuff like that. But uh, I had to tell the fans the way it should be. It's, uh, every time we say something in our show, it's a fact. Is it true? I never come in the show saying stuff to uh, people talk about what Ozzy said last night or to, to give the rating or whatever up. I'm going to get paid the same amount of money no matter when number one or last. And and uh, the only one, the only one thing I talked to talk about is that we're going to talk the fact. We're going to tell the truth. Is player like it? Hey, I'm here. The, the front office like it? I'm here. The, 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 the owners like it? I'm here. Because whatever I say there, they cannot reply back to me. They can. They don't have ammunition to reply back because everything I say in the show is true. 
flat as true. That's why I'm not here yet, and I hope I never will, because uh, uh, you're going to touch something very sensitive, like, uh, can please ask you, don't say this about that, or, or we don't know anything about it. I said, nowadays, nowadays it's so it's, it's, it's so hard because all the song before the, we get the break news or the, what we got to take, everybody know about it. Everybody. Hey, then like, okay, we got to talk about this. And we got to talk. Sometimes we don't want to talk about it. And I say, yep, we will talk about it. I take full responsibility about the conversation and we talk about it. You know how, you guys don't have to put your nose on it, but it's, it's my job to say what the, what, what the fans need to hear. That's what we're here for. All right, bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. First of all, I know you. Bullshit. You just want to be the manager. I know. It's okay. No big deal. We all know you want to be the manager, so bullshit. No, and no, then two, two, no one's censoring you no matter what because you're going to say whatever the fuck you want. Listen, yeah. I played for your ass for seven years, and you said some shit, and we would be like, oh, my God, what is Ozzy doing? Right? And we'd laugh about it. You and I that, laugh that, about it. But it was, it was true a lot of times, but it was funny as hell. And then third of all, Dude, you say what you want because you believe it, and I'm all for it. Because between you and Garfine, you guys are White Sox fans. So you are the voice of the fan. So listen, forget the games. I'm tuning in to watch your ass say something stupid. Well, hey, that's what we pay for. I said, by the way, when they lose, I say, they lose. Don't, no way. We don't lose. It, 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 back then, it's talking about the managing job. I was talking with Junior having breakfast today. It's so many things happen. Uh, you know I mean? Out there, I talked to Frank last night about it. Uh, of the of the record, and uh, you know me. I see what happened to Renteria. I see what happened to my boy Robin Ventura. I see what happened to uh, I see what happened to to Tony. Uh, it's just like man, I like wow. If this is going to be like that. My interview as a manager was a, to me personally was a joke, a totally joke. What they what they asking the people was in the in the room with me asking about the ball club, asking about the thing. Uh, that's why if it's my family, uh, it's fair job, of course. I'm not better than anybody to say I don't want to manage it. I, I might want to do it. Next, next day I wake up and say, ah, if I take my grandkids to school, I say, I don't want to manage it. But I, I, obviously, I'm a baseball man. But in the meanwhile, it just, it just, the, the, the it's just a lot of things out there. I'm not clicked yet. Uh, I, I, a lot of people they say the game changed. I say nope, the game not change. The people running this game change. This game not change for anything. But uh, if we talk about it, the, the positive and the negative. If I'm managing, uh, it's more negative than positive, and that's why I had to think about it. It's, they call me and say, "Hey, let's talk." But uh, I don't know. I got something in my mind. Say. If the White Sox call me, that's the only thing I, I really, because I live here in Chicago, uh, I will tell Jerry, say, listen, I need to hang out. I ain't going to interview 30,000 people, then I'm going to be in the group. If you really know who I am, what you do, what you can bring to the table, how things change. I know this ball club better than anybody in baseball, anybody. And I think it's a different thing, but I know how to go through the, through the process uh, once again, just to just to please people or just to be nice with everybody out. Uh, I went through the process already. It's, I don't like the process. I think they was playing with me in that particular time, and that's that's the reason I, I, my man is gonna be in and out or nothing. I'm not gonna be like go go to different MLB network or ESPN like the White Sox talking to Jose, Luis, Antonio, all those guys, and and us again. And I, 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 I think I'm. I'm too old for that. I think I can bring a lot of great stuff for baseball. Also, I can bring bad, a lot of bad things about the game. But uh, I think I earned my 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 stuff to be. Is 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 I have a great job. I have a great job. I think uh, it's job. But I, I'm not I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna manage. I'm not gonna be there because I hear that from a lot of different guys. Manager before they say no, I never will do it. All the song two years later, they are in the field. But uh, we see we see what happens. We see what's going on. I think White Sox need more than a manager. I think White Sox need a lot of film, man. It's just, just like, wow. Whoever going to come take this job, they got his hands full because that's a lot of work. Not, not just in the big league level. That's why people look at it. All the way to the minor league level. They're not a, I, don't, I don't think I don't see them in the, in the right, uh, right 
spot right now. Whoever come here, you got to go the right direction, build the stuff from the from the bottom, not from the top, and move on. And hopefully, hopefully everything work out for them. Okay, so I, I want to know because I'm intrigued as a White Sox fan and someone that played for you. Why was it a joke when they interviewed you? I I mean I thought they were se- semi serious before they hired Pedro. And then if you don't want to be manager, I mean, can we get an Aussie for GM with like the hawk with like the big cowboy hat on? And Aussie <laughs> wants you. <laughs> hey, by the way. I don't want that job. If they ask me, they say, can you be assistant GM or, or, or GM? I say, hell no. no Why Chicago. not? No, anyway, because I can do that. I can. I, I'm not good at it. Uh, uh, be a GM or be, you know, uh, bigger than be a GM. It's, 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 a lot of people think it's like, uh, like okay, there's a big lead. No, be a GM is all the way down the minor leagues. A lot of work, scouts, coaches, uh all this different thing they got to go through. I don't, I don't think I'm ready to do that. And I never will be ready to do that. But uh, hey, they yeah. have all the power. They got hey, all the power. Way. You well, can have all the power. Yeah, managers don't have yeah, the power anymore. all the power you could have if you were the GM president. But that's pick why the I players, think it, pick the coaches. You could have, think about your coaching staff. You could have Frank. You could have Robin. You could have Jack McDowell. You could have Oni, Osney, and Ozzy Jr. as your coaches. <laughs> no, but hey, sometimes you have much power. That's danger. That's danger. Okay, put it this way: when when they interview me about the manager, you ask me about you don't think it was a joke. Well, they they talk to me as a manager. Next day, they say Pedro Grifo was the manager. Okay, that's fine with me. Hey, uh, when they talk to me, I walk to the room. I walk to the room, and it was Rick. Then you sign uh, Chris Getz and somebody else, assistant GM, I don't even care about his name, Jeremy something, I don't know. Okay, I walk in, I go, hey, that's it? I said, yeah. Said, oh, wow. Let me tell you that. Daniel, you was my drinking partner, my be- my guy I talk to the- about the game every day. Joey Cora teaches you a lot of great things about baseball. Uh, you did, you, the only thing to do is be- put videos in my, in my, in my iPad. I guess you know who I am, what I can bring to the table. Chris Getz, I'm the guy I bring you to the big league, personal. I went down to the minor league, look at you, because Manny Trillo told me, take a look at this kid, he might help you. I went down, take you, I put you in the thing. I told Manny, I said, this kid is going to help you. Well, big league. Rick, what the hell Rick, you could ask me about baseball? Not because I don't know you know anything about baseball more than me. It's just because we worked together for 10 years. Then another guy is his assistant general manager. I even know who he is. Uh, you know, me this I said, this is a joke. This is like you gotta to talk to me about baseball when you guys I, I grew up with you guys when I was managing. Then what's the question you could ask me? You're older, you're vocal. You still crazy? You still talk what you think? They know that. They know I'll be. It, it, I'm gonna be myself, and that's why I think it was a little bit of joke. Uh, that not because they interviewed me. Just also a day later, they named uh, they named Pedro as a manager. So it was a setup. They already knew. Uh, no, it was. I don't know. It was, that, we're gonna give Aussie courtesy. They, that's not. I didn't know. What, yeah, but the funny thing about it, the funny thing about it, okay, you in Chicago, okay? And did you say we're going to interview Ozzy? Fans and media, Ozzy's the guy. That's it. Ozzy's the guy. All of a sudden, you bring someone out of the, out of the moon, like, oh, my. I was, not because Pedro is like, it was the guy nobody was thinking about it, even talk about it. All of a sudden, you bring that guy, and then I think it was unnecessary to... To, to make that move. I said, listen, we got Pedro, we got Pedro, we like Pedro, we don't like you. That's it, for whatever reason it was. They don't have to, to do an interview. And by the way, a good friend of mine, not a good friend of mine, I'm a friend with Pedro. I don't want to say the name here because I think uh, it'd be unfair for him to say, say, hey, the White Sox interview you? I said, yep. I said, they told Pedro two days ago he was the manager. And uh, like, if I was maybe 10 years ago, the, the volcano will erupt. Oh man, God, I'll be telling all kinds of stuff. <laughs> oh, for nowadays, like you're oh, so mature oh. now. You've grown yeah, up well, so I know much, Ozzy, from ten years ago. You've you've no. matured. 
No, yes, but, but but you know what? I think I'm older. I know how the game is now. I see a lot of people should be on the game. They're not in the game for big reasons. But uh, I, I, it's like, man, they just, like, they just talk to me about just because Jerry said, hey, you want to talk to Ozzy. Just because, well, no, because you know what, AJ? When they hire Tony La Russa, uh, I was ready to play golf. I was in the bathroom num doing number two. And I see my phone ring. It was Jerry. I said, oh, wow, what happened? I asked the phone, what's up, Jerry? Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good, good, everything's well. Uh, listen, uh, we got to fire Pedro, uh, Pedro, uh, rent, rig renteria. And I go, okay, <laughs> okay. What you want me to say? I'm going to say, you're not going to be the guy. We know what to interview you, know what to talk to you. To me, that was more, I appreciate that more than what they did after. I said, you're not the guy. I said, when you find out the guy, you will find out why you're not the guy. Said, All right. I heard my feeling a little bit. Yeah, but not that much. I went out and play golf. Then that night, somebody, a friend of the of Tony called me. Say, hey, you going to coach uh, for the White Sox? I said, no. I said, what? You know what to help Tony La Russa? I was, I was unknown before anybody know about Tony's coming in town. And I got so excited, man. Be honest with you. I got so excited to see Tony come back. I thought Tony going to be the guy. It was when in the past, obviously, he's older. He was a little sick. But I, I think I was very, very, very happy about having Tony aboard. I talked to Tony about it. He said, anything you need, hey, man, I'm here. I know those players very well. I watch those guys every day. But uh, that's a different different scenario. But the, the first time Jerry talked to me about it, said, you're not going to be the guy. I respect that. Same way with uh, the, the general manager of uh, San Diego Padres. The interview, the interview went, went well. Unbelievable interview. Great interview. Uh AJ, I think his name is AJ. Yeah. Those and, AJs are smart. Yeah, they they, they they try to be smart, but uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, 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 and the funny thing about it, because we talk, and he told me right in my face, listen, Ozzy, if we don't make this deal happen, you are the guy. But this thing happened, obviously, we're not going to pick you. I said, hey, fair. Uh, a week later, he called me, say, brother, thank you so much. Wow, wow, it was great. All well, my organization love you, what you say, what you talk, what you think about the game. Uh, but we got to sign the guy. When you find out who he is, then you're going to say, all right. He, then day later or whatever, they, they named Bob Melvin. I said, wow, well, I'm going to say, what? You, Bob, not me? What's going on? Come on. <laughs> no, this man is a manager of the year a few times. And and, and he told me, he said, hey, we love to you to work with Bob Melvin, I said, listen, I love to coach. I love to coach. I'd rather coach third base than managing. Then, because I don't have nothing to do, I have fun in the game, fun with the players. But I, I said, no, no, because I don't want to coach. It's just because you're going to be in San Diego. My family's here. I have a good job here. Uh, I get paid to talk shit about players. I love it. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 yeah, no, I get paid less money, but at least nobody can tell me like, "Hey, don't say that." Or the place is going to get mad at you because you're the manager. No, I can say whatever I want without saying, "Oh, come on!" I see looking to me under the bus again. But anyway, uh, and to me that was fair, man. That was fair. I said thank you very much. I was very pleased with the conversation. But after that, it's like, eh, I don't know. I just, I just sitting here and like I said earlier, I'm not better in the game. And they asked me to it. If somebody asked me to talk to them, I might will talk to, but I got to talk to my family first. But I said, why Sox come to me, approach me? I'm ready for, of course I'm ready for, but you got a few things on the table. I got to tell them before, before we talk about it. Yeah. And what would you want? If they talk to you, what would need to be cleared up with them? I don't want to, oh. You're talking about a, a manager gig and also obviously a, a team that, you know, still, obviously values you because they are always looking within the organization for replacements. Oh, one thing about uh, looking forward, is it going to be a new year match? Obviously, we will be. Obviously, I have to talk to him because he don't know who, who I am. It depends who's, who's coming aboard. Okay? But if I know, the guy, if I know who I am, then, you know I me. Mean, then why you know what I can bring to the table? You know what I feel about the ball club. You know I know the ball club very well. And then... But I'm not going to go through the process like 30 people interview for the job. 
And, and, and that's why I say, say, hey, guys, okay, you want me to manage it? It's time to build this thing. It's time to rebuild, build. I don't say rebuild because they hate that word rebuild in the big league, but they had to build the organization once again. And I know I went through it. I see it before. It reminds me a little bit of 2004, 2003, 4 before I got here. And, and, and I think I think all together here, we did a tremendous job to put this organization back out. No, just me. Minor league coaches, minor league uh, scouts, people work for the White Sox organization all the way in the minor league. We was almost, you know, same page all the way to the big league. And I think that's why I believe that worked very well for us because everybody was pulling the same rope. Now I don't see that happening. And that's, that's one thing about it. I got the job. Everybody had to put the same rope and have an identity. They don't have any identity. They they like okay, let's go play. Oh, we, or you want to be a power hitter? Or you want to be a, a powerhouse pitching? Or you just go there and freelance it? Or you you know you gotta build that all the way from the minor league to here. Who you guys are? What the White Sox going to be from all the way through the minor league? You see the minor league team play? That's the same way they're gonna play in the big league. It's not before like minor league guys play that one way in the big league. They play the other way. We got. They got to sit down and say, "What kind of guy we like to help in the ball club? What the mentality and, and all the different thing about it? Just not like double A play one way, triple A play one way. When they come to the big league, it's all different. I think every guy, is, everything got to start from the minor league, grow up together, all the way through it. You can call and say, "Why soft baseball? Yes, why soft baseball? They're not going to call it like, oh, we're going to be like that team. We're going to be like this team. We're going to be numbers people. We're going to know. We're going to be everything. We're going to put it. They have to put it together." Put it together. Numbers, stats, uh, players, hard, check everybody and put everybody in expectations. Say, hey, you know good? We get that right out of you. And right now, seeing everybody do whatever they fucking want to do in that ball club. So what have you heard from former players? And especially, have you heard from current players? Because you've called out current players for how they've spoken lately, too. Well, it's just funny because I, I, I know exactly everything happened in the clubhouse, guys. I know. Everything happened in the clubhouse. How many times the guy shower a day, did they go to sleep, what they eat. I know everything in the clubhouse, okay? Uh, current player called me, asked me about, is that going to be the next guy? I said, nah, I don't think so. Uh, former players, but you know what happened? Do you remember when Middleton, the kid Middleton? Uh, yeah. Say that stuff about the White Sox. I got upset with Rick Hahn because Rick Hahn went after a few media people. And by the way, Minato was playing, he was in the city. He was in the city playing against the White Sox. And he should call Middleton, who I don't know where, in the hotel, in the clubhouse. Can I talk to you for a minute? I said, What's that mean? What, what's going on? Why you wait you to leave to make this comment? Okay. That, don't go after media. Don't go after because they know, they know, and I know Middleton was right. Sorry. Yes, he was, he was right. Then you ask Kaiko, you ask Lynx. Uh, then your little different type of animal, you know, type of, different type of guy. But Lynx say the same stuff without saying anything. <laughs> and then I'm not saying stuff. They know. And I think what Middleton did. It's a favor to the White Sox. A favor. Say, hey, guys, wake up. Open your eyes. I, inside there, it's not what you guys think. That's what I think me to I, I will, it's our White Sox from office, I will appreciate that. Because I say, okay, if this man was inside there and he's saying this with a fact, and he said that when he coming to play in Chicago, you know what the hit is going to be? And he said it. Step it up. I say, yes, I'm going to say, and I'll repeat it. Then you have to open your eyes and say, wow, we missing something or we don't know everything what's going on. That, that's what's my point. And a couple of weeks later, they make those massive changes in the front office. So did you think that time would ever come? Like, were you surprised that, that it came at that point? I mean, knowing Rick and especially Kenny for a very long time. And then were you surprised nothing's been announced yet, but that, you know, rumors immediately surface that they're going to just kind of work within the organization to replace that. And we don't know that for sure, but maybe you can help us out because you know way more about what's going on than we do. 
Well, I got I was shocked. I know something's going to come on over because fans, he was upset. Fans, he was, uh, what, how long we going to keep those people? How long we going to do this? And I think Jerry did a tremendous job for the organization, knowing how much you love Kenny, how much you respect Rick. But that was unfortunately little thing, man. They, they inside there happened. A lot of things happened. They know what's happy about it. Uh, I, I think what I see is a lot of ego in the middle. Uh, surprise, yes, very, very, very shocked, very surprised because happened during the season. I know after the season, Mike Tupper, I think it's still a couple more moves to be made in the front office, maybe, or whoever come in, we're going to bring his own people, whatever. But uh, I, I think it's, uh, it was great for the organization. Talk about organization, but talk about fame based people in Chicago was a little happy. I wasn't happy because I don't want anybody to lose their job, especially the guy and people think I hate. I, I we, we, we hate each other. I think so. But uh, uh, nowadays I grow up and, nah, man, you just give me the first opportunity to you believe in me for the first time. Uh, I did a good job for you. I, I think what I did, you not believe what I did, <laughs> I guess. But uh, it just, it's just, it's uh, just, listen, the White Sox had a long way to go. We're talking just about a, a big league level. They had to bring a guy here, have experience to me, and this is going to be the biggest move for Jerry because Jerry is, is an old man. I don't care what he said. He's healthy. Yeah, thank God he's healthy. He looked good. Yes, he talked very well. Yeah, but age is an age. And they had to pick the right guy because it might be the last guy you're going to pick and I hope that guy, whoever come in, stay the longer turner than Rick and, and, and Kenny did it. Because this is not going to be easy decision, man. That's not going to be easy. And whoever come in, he thinks like, wow, I'm going to general match of the big league team. No, papi. You're going to face it through. And you're going to face uh, a, a, pretty, a, a music you never dance. And you're going to start learning how to dance the music they're going to play here. And... They, they, they got a lot of work to do. That's why I think Jerry waiting. And I don't figure, I don't think Jerry going to fire Kenny and Rick without knowing or have an idea where the guy is going to come forward to be the White Sox GM and president or whatever they want to call it. We'll swing right back to Legends territory in a sec. Let's shout out our good friends that hook us up with the sweetest shades in the biz. Yes, Shady Rays who we are excited to be partnered with for this run of Legends Territory. Do you want world-class products without paying your ass off? These are your guys right here, okay? If you like what you're seeing right now, but you feel like you shouldn't be paying at ridiculous prices for polarized sunglasses that look good that give you all of the style, all of the protection from the sun for your eyes. This is where you need to be looking. Plus, it's not just about how you look, but how you're treated, which is important here with FT and with LT and with everything that's a part of the Foul Territory group and the Legends Territory shows is if you have a problem like you lost or broke your shades, we don't need to have a whole talk show about it, okay? I like how AJ is really contributing here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking good in my shady rays. Oh, now that I took them off, I can contribute. Thank you. Actually, I liked what you were doing. Just just shaking your head, agreeing with everything I say, which is rare. I'll go back to that. <laughs> but if you lose or break a pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. That is part of the lost and broken replacements plan. And also... Shady Rays has a great setup for receiving shades, and maybe you're not into them within the first 30 days. Cool. Return them. They'll get you something new, or they'll refund what you've got. So lots of ways to be taken care of by the best in the biz, Shady Rays. And we want to remind all of our watchers, listeners of Legends Territory that you too can be like AJ Pruszynski. Exclusively. For Legends Territory watchers and listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal this season at ShadyRays.com. Use the code FOUL, F-O-U-L, for 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250 
thousand people. AJ, you nailed it. Back to Legends territory. You meant you brought up Kenny, and you said, "What'd you say? You don't hate Kenny, or you don't hate each other?" Oh, we hate. Are we? we well, you know what's funny? It's like a marriage. When we got married, wild, wow, beautiful honeymoon. <laughs> we love each other. We kiss each other everywhere. <laughs> it's like a honeymoon. After yeah. that, after that, he, he fall in love with somebody else. <laughs> Things don't work out very well enough. You know, I, people ask me, I even know, I don't remember how many years I managed in the big league with them. I went nine, maybe 11. And it was the last maybe year and a half of, 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 of uh, being together. Everything went south, man. Everything. Everything went south for so many reasons. Uh, I, I will blame myself. Yes, I blame myself. I'm going to put up with that shit. And that easy as that. Uh, why? Because I know every day I come to the ballpark, I do everything is great for the organization. Uh, I think I control the ball club very well. And I was treating like I was a piece of shit because no reason. But I also understand I was very vocal, a lot of power. Uh, and they was like, hey, wait a minute, this man getting too much power here. We get rid of him. I beg uh, Jerry to stay. Uh, it could have happened. Unfortunately, I made the biggest mistake in my life. Uh, go to an organization. It was it was worse than the, the White Sox was. But uh, I don't regret going to the Marlins. Nope. I know. Uh, that, the Marlins saved my, my grandkids' life because they, they paid me good enough money to make sure my grandkids would be fine. But uh, to me, it wasn't about money. It was by I want to stay in the game the way everything when it was wrong, uh, I was I wasn't happy. I was upset. And nowadays, like everybody's like, "Oh, mental problem, uh, depressed, all that stuff." I might went through it, but I don't know. I don't know that. I was I got family around me. I might was stressed. I might was sad. I might was disappointed. But in the meanwhile, thank God, you know I me. Mean? I do. They asked me right away to do something now, and I did it. But uh, the, the 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 situation with the White Sox. Late in my career as a manager, there it was toxic, very toxic, and I was. We it seemed like we was like the start. The stuff started going to the clubhouse. The stuff started going to the players, and something we we don't put attention to late. I said, "Well, all stuff, personal stuff, or whatever." Manager, general manager, now it's time dealing with the players. They asking them questions. I think that's not fair for the players to be through that stupidity. Two grown men was making talking about. It. Twitter, talking about kids, talking about uh, if Kenny says something, I reply back. If I say something, Kenny reply back. And it was very, very, very toxic situation. And I think the best thing he did, uh, Jerry did, uh, pick one and he picked he pick Kenny. And I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Okay. How many times? Because, listen, I lived all this. I was in the middle of a lot of this, laughing a lot of times and crying at times out too because I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? You don't cry. No, I don't cry, but I know. <laughs> crying internally. How, yeah. how many times, and I told this story on here before, how many times did you and Kenny in the office, you and Kenny, Kenny and Walk, I mean, whoever it was, Joey and Kenny, you guys, I mean, we'd be in the second inning, and I'd come in and y'all be in the office just getting wild in there. And we'd all be out there like with cups, right? We'd be like with cups against the door. We didn't need them very much because you could hear you go, fuck you, no, fuck you, fuck you. I mean, it was, you got to admit, it was a wild scene there for a while. And it was, it was listen, a, it I look back on it and I laugh, but it, it was, was unbelievable. It was a few times. You forgot one time I'm, man, I'm coaching, managing the game, and Kenny went down to the tunnel and called me on with the argument in the middle of the, in the, middle of the game, in the tunnel, oh. right, where the batting cage was. I'm like, what is this? You know what I mean? Like, bro, then I said, a lot of times, yes, a lot of times we did it. That's why it came toxic. It, it came ugly because I wasn't... I wasn't the same guy I was in the past. Uh, I played for the White Sox, man. I played so many years with the White Sox. I know White Sox people. I know White Sox fans. I know White Sox media. Uh, Jay Ryan is still sign check for me. You know what I mean? Just like I said, really? You think you like this organization more than me because you are my boss? Uh, you're wrong. You're wrong because I got to deal with the real thing. It's the players. When you deal with the players, that to me is the most a special, hard, and when you have to be more careful how you're going to deal with players. And that's the hardest thing in, in baseball. 
make sure those guys go after the way the last few years put my place in the middle of all this stupid stuff. It's like you, 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 it's like you married and you fight with your wife every day and your kids out there listen to you calling your wife name and she call your name. That's not healthy for the kid, for the kids. Same way in baseball. When you see the two guys build this ball club together, being this, this stuff together for a little while and you hear them fighting almost every day, you're like, man, this is tired. Jesus, guys, get the fuck out of here. Can't even get another job. Players do that. I play. I know how players are going to react. And I think for the last two years, it was very, 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 very toxic for everybody. And I, 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 I did apologize to my players because we put them in the spot that should be on it and listen to that shit day in and day out. But, but that's the last winner. So maybe you guys... Should be mixing it up a little bit more. True. Maybe it's been yep. too tame, too lackadaisical. Hey, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you. A lot of people ask me, a lot of people ask me, a lot of people, oof, plenty. Did you, did you, did you think this ball club being last play or second last place with you manager? I said, yeah. Yeah. But they're going to be miserable like a motherfucker. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, hey, listen. I don't be like like somebody else. Oh, Pedro, Pedro is a manager. Well, we're getting better. We go do this. Oh, well, this guy must that. No, I will talk so much shit about that guy. He will start <laughs> playing hard. And by the way, he's not gonna be in the lineup. You don't oh. play the way. If we don't play the way you should be playing, you're not playing. This is that. I don't care who you are. You Pantera. You Eloy. You Moncada. You Granda. You You Benintendi. Whoever it is. If you're not playing the way you should be playing, you're fucking not playing. It's just that. Go talk to your agent, call Jerry, and call anybody. If you don't play the way we think you should be playing, it's I'm the manager. You're not playing. Not playing. I call people from the minor league. I said, this guy tried to play hard for, for us. That's one reason about, you know, not because it's, it's next to, you know, in the computer. A lot of people, I'm about AJ. AJ, I say, AJ? Bro, is any manager. I don't know. AJ played for different managers. I don't care. He said, is Abba players like AJ show up every day to fucking play the game the way he played the game? I will take those guys every minute. Same way with my Burley. Never give me any problem. He said, hey, we're here to play. I, have, I was lucky enough to manage a group of guys. Group of guys. They know how to play together. They know how what they, they worry about it. They got in their ass each other. They don't need Ask you to take the TD out. Say, okay, baby, here he is. I'm sorry. Oh, my baby. So you got gas? No. The players take care of their own problems. My coaching staff was amazing because they went by the business the right way. And I was the bad guy. Uh, that, that's like the, uh, in that group, I think I uh, was like, man, I said, you're fucking it up for us. But that's the way it is nowadays, man. Watching the game every day, I curse more of the of, of watching the game that any time in my life, and I curse every two minutes. Because when I see this team play, it's sad, man. It's sad. And I love those I love those guys up there. I talk to them all the time. And when I go to the ballpark, I'm like, golly, for some reason, somehow, unfortunately, they don't click the way they should be clicking. They talk like they're clicking, but they don't. They, they don't. It's just so much talent. It's so much talent, AJ, out there. It's sad. They had to, they, they had to trade seven players. Did you last play? Who won? you you might trade one or somebody won one guy? I know the organization. Hey, can this guy help? It's seven guys. The organization trade to the White Sox because they think they can help them. How are we going to trade seven guys that can help us to win the world, you know, go to the pennant race and they cannot win it for you? That's the saddest part. The way I feel like, wait a minute. Most of the time, if they, okay, 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 I need your pitcher. I need this guy. Okay, but you need seven guys out of this stinky roster to help somebody out, and you cannot help yourself. Then the problem is bigger than what people think. So what do you think when you see Lance Lynn immediately go to L.A. and succeed? You can't tell me that Lance Lynn wasn't trying. He's not that kind of guy. Clearly, there is something that is built within the Dodgers organization that was not being communicated and executed correctly with Lance. Or do you think that 
it was on Lance, well, and suddenly Lance, he just so it's found Raven, it. It's Raven, it's Kelly. I mean, it's pretty much everybody that left. Right, uh, exactly. Yeah, everybody. But immediately go and, and succeed. Like you said, these are good ball players. Why, just from a performance standpoint and a success standpoint, why wasn't it happening here? Because that would be the first question if you're, you know, getting interviewed again to take on a role within the ball club. Like, <laughs> how come we missed the boat with these guys? How come they <laughs> immediately succeeded? It was, it was like a second later – they are better ball players on their next ball club. Because when you walk in the crowd, you know what you're going to see, what you're going to face. I say, oh, my God. And, and, and Ling is being so many clubhouse is a leader. And I see Ling make a couple of stuff on the field. I hate him. Like, what's going on here? But now they and now I say, he, he was right. You know what I mean? He was, he was making, you know, faces and throwing his hands up. And I'm like, hey, man, come on. You're the leader of this book. You're not supposed to be doing that. But now I know why. Bro, I I really like to sit down. I don't know he drink. I really want to sit down with him one-on-one, -on -one, have a couple oh, beers. drinks. <laughs> how about how, asking how about, you know, personal, nothing, whatever you told me, is nothing will come out. What I told you, nothing going to come out. Just to see his reaction. Because this man, to me, he was a real, real human being with that uniform Real, never lied to the media, never see you know hiding behind when he sucked, he sucked when he was good, it was good. It's just guy was forward what it was. Hey, I suck today, I'm, I have to make better pitches. That's hey, you, you think I want to, you know, it's the, the only guy I hear 99% of the time after the game talking, it was linked. That's why I respect him so much. So much. I say hey, I to him a couple of times. I like his attitude on the field. Some people hate his attitude. I know. I love it. But uh, at least he never hired behind the scene to say, oh, my God, no, my slider was slide. My sinker, they say, listen, bro, I just let two couple balls in the middle. They hit a home run. I got to get better. He got to get better. Who got to get better? Me. No, my coaches. No, I know how to get there. But also they see his teammates playing, talking, reacting. That's why this maybe this guy said, you know what? I, I gotta I gotta go somewhere and I hope I go somewhere I can I can be have fun, have fun again. Wanna wear this uniform again. And I think it, it, it was happening. Not to him. A lot of guys, I'm gonna respect few people out there because they don't say what they feel, what they know, what they think, to respect the other teammate, but it wasn't fun at all. It, it was it, 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 yeah. Why, why wasn't – Dallas Keiko was the first one to say something a few years back, and people looked at him like, dude, what's wrong with this guy? Proves out he was right. Wait a minute. I said that. I said, wait a minute. Did this man say that thing? You know how many teams that kid playing? No, never say anything about that thing. The soon he said, we, we said, we're a joke. We, we don't prepare the world stuff. And nobody – nobody say anything. Like, oh, yeah, you're full of shit. You shut up. That's what you think. You know, I mean, all this stuff. Listen, that's easy thing to, to say, AJ. When they have uh, Renteria here, oh, my God, we love Renteria. Renteria's old boy. We love him. Oh, he's your daddy. Renteria left. Oh, they fired him. Oh, my God. Daddy's coming in town. Grandpa is the best. We love to play for Tony, BB, blah, 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 blah. Well, out, out. We are family. We love each other. Look at this. Then Tony, oh, no. The best thing ever happened was Pedro. That's full of shit. That's full of shit. I said, listen, don't love me, man. By the way, you want to hear something funny? A couple of nights ago, I talked with my kids. And I asked the junior, say, okay, dad, you and match the White Sox. Tell me your first day what you're going to say in the meeting. I'm like, what? I said, what are I going to say in the meeting in the clubhouse first day? I said, that's easy, bro. I said, listen, do you know who I am? And the reason we're going to be the new manager for the White Sox because you guys sucks. Because you guys play good. I, I've been TV right now doing my job. But the reason I'm here because you guys sucks and they think I can make you guys better. And fuck it. See what happens. <laughs> By the way, you remember what you used to tell us? Good teams win. Bad teams have meetings. Teams. <laughs> hey, I said, I, and, hey. and the other one was good players play. Bad players hustle. That was your other line you used to hey, always say. Hey, Yo, true. he hustles. <laughs> hey, hey, you too say, hey, you know what's funny? Good team. What the fuck good team does? 
win games. Host your team that meeting every other fucking day, meaning, ah, okay? Good players, playing the game right. Host your player, they fake it. They also, they, 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 they hit a double and then slide in second base when the ball's still in the, in the <laughs> we, we know that. You know, we know that. I did it too. I, you know how many times? That's why I said, man, I see hustling every day. I said, yeah, because I was all shit. I got to hustle. I got to do something to, to, to at least fake it to the, to the, to the fans. Like, oh my God, look, it's dirty. Man, I, 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 I leave the, the ground ball in the middle, ground ball to second base, and I'm playing third base line, size, and I'm diving, diving for the ball. Like, well, look at that. He's trying. No, I'm not trying. I just want to get dirty. I got to fake it, brother. I got to, I got to make money for, for my living. But that's mm -hmm. the way it is, man. Here, they're not hustle. They don't. They don't play hard. And one thing I hate when the manager says, oh, we play hard. We play. No, yes, you have to play hard. Just play good. They say, you have to play hard because you can pay to play hard. You don't get paid to get, no, you get paid to play hard. The hardest you can day in and day out. Don't play hard. Just play good. Let's play good baseball, play a winning, a winning team. Bro, AJ, we down two runs in the eight, seven, eight, nine. And we swing 2 0 when the guy hitting 180 in batting eight and nine. <laughs> and nobody said anything. Mm. Like, you know what? If that happened to me, I'm I call timeout in the middle of the game. Time. Get that fuck out of here. Next, who want to hit? You want to hit? Okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't care. Then I was playing the people why. I said, You're hitting 180, you're batting eight, and we down by two runs, and you're a leadoff hitter, and you're going to swing 2 0. Fucking fly ball to goddamn third base. I don't want to let you die. Get out. Then you do it once, and everybody out would see what's going on. So if Jerry Reinsurf calls you, or if you're sitting down having a meeting with the ball club about what they should do next, you mentioned they traded away a lot of good players. Would you say stop? You guys should be able to handle this current group, or are you a believer in the the big ass rebuild? They did that already, right? Like there was a chance. I mean, we heard rumors about maybe Dylan Cease moving at the trade deadline. It didn't end up happening. And fans are pretty split on this, it sounds like. I mean, you have the pulse better than I do, but some fans want to see them totally tear it down, reset, fresh players, get a ton of prospects back. And others are like, nah, Dylan Cease and Luis Robert are two of the most talented players in the league. Those guys should be who you build around. Well, not right now I can say one guy, and I love Dylan Cease to death. I love that kid. And I think uh, it's two things you ask is 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 organization. Can we win? With this player, but I don't want to say anything. With this player, next two, three years, nope. Get somebody we can win in, after, in three years. That's that's how you build a mentality about, okay, can we win with this guy in two years? Yes, okay. Now we keep him and we're going to build around him to make the ball club better to win in the next couple of years. Can we compete this year? The thing is, we have a mind we, because we play that stinky division we're in. I say, oh, a couple more players, they'll be fine. No, yeah. Do you think the Minnesota, the Guardians, and, and, and Detroit, they're not going to get better next year? They will be because they are playing with more talent. Same way, I'm out of, you know, I mean, Minnesota playing right now, they play another division, they're done, but they play with without Boxton, without half of the pitching staff. Uh, you see the Guardian trade everybody in, in, in the trade their lines. Why? Because they know they cannot win in this year. And they're going to say, okay, we just bring people for the future. That's what it is. That's what they have to think about it. Can we win with those guys right now? No. Well, uh, sorry, guys, but we'll move on. They don't like to have the rebuild work again. I don't think. I don't know why. Well, if, if I have the manager to say, let's rebuild. Say, why? I got three years guarantee. <laughs> I <didn't even> win, <laughs> but I like to compete, man. I like to compete. I like to win, and I think thank you to uh, Kenny. Always try to to make me uh, to make me a good club, a good club to compete. That's why I think I love to win. Do you think there's too much attention on the White Sox and what happened this year versus the Cardinals, Mets, Padres, Yankees? Could make the case that those four teams had much higher expectations than the White Sox this year. It might be. I can only say that because I'm here in Chicago. I talked to some people in New York. They say, "Oh boy, the Yankees, the people on Yankees, they they booing Giancarlo Stanton already." You know what I mean? Just I think I believe that 
those situations would be worse. I don't, I don't know about San Diego. They ain't know the country. <laughs> All the games is like 10 hours later. We don't know. But uh, <laughs> the thing is, you know, here, those guys, we got to win. The, the, the bad thing about the White Sox, when they were talking to the media, oh, we got to win. Uh, it's just two years, three years window. We got to be the best. Uh, we hear Pedro Grifo say a lot of great things. I think to me, say the great thing. Nothing that was happening, and that's the problem. We got to play guy. We got to play guy. We got to hit the crowd, man. We got to turn the double plays. We got to play different. We got to compete. We got to represent the shirt. You know, all kind of stuff. Nothing that. Nothing. Nothing happening. Nothing. I'm looking around just to one thing. Nothing. All what they say. That's the problem for the White Sox. What happened? They start selling Mercedes van, and all the sudden they have. They have a car from Venezuela, a, 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 a car from Venezuela. They make in Venezuela, and you can compare Venezuela car with United States car, and that's exactly what they was doing. They was selling <clears throat> Mercedes Benz when they was selling Kiara back in Venezuela. That's 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 what they killed them. To me, that's what the a lot of people is more upset than anything else. All right, let me ask you, and I want to tie this to, to your days about. Yeah, I'm um, tired. I'm tired of hearing you talk about and making me sad with all this sad white talk stuff. Well, I'm so going to tie I'm gonna present change to past. around a little bit. Yeah, we're going to What go did past. Pudge say to us on on a prior oh, yeah. Legends territory? We had Pudge on, and Pudge said, who's, who's your boy now, Pudge said, when Robin Ventura and Nolan Ryan got into it, you were just circling around, jumping around like a bunny <laughs> rabbit because you didn't want to get dirty. So that was Is from that, Pudge. Hey, it's one thing about it. I don't want to get my ass kicked. <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't want to be like showing up like the show. Ta got knocked down. Everybody can see it. No, no. Do you know what happened? I have a. I have a, a knee surgery the year before, and I was rehearsing on the tunnel, putting me heat on because my it was sore. And all the song, only thing we can hear is the fight. Hermie chased me. I know I, my. You can see my pants up. And my knee, my knee brace, it was down. And I tried to just protect people. I just like, hey, we got so many big guys. We have Roberto Hernandez, Bo, Bo Dye, so we got pass. We have big boy. What the hell are I going to do? Get there and they go, uh-oh, look at what happened. Us is down. Nah, I know that's stupid. Nope. <laughs> I, I'm going to fight for my boy. I'm going to fight for my boy because I love Robin and and, and all, all the songs. But the, the problem was that I was... I was doing something when the, the, the fight started. Yeah, but I, I seen like I was dancing samba, you know, me like, hey, 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 easy now. But uh, that's what it was. That's what it was. And uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to say I wasn't there. I'm not going to get my ass get knocked down like in, everybody can see me now. They, they be showing that thing in TV every day. Look at what happened to Ozzy in 1900 years ago. Nope. <laughs> you, you didn't want to do one of these? One of these? No. Squaring up? No, I like I push it. You know, I mean, I I start a lot of fights. It, uh, when I was in manager, when I start a lot, of, you know what? My biggest I I challenged Tony Arusa fighting when I was player. Then I challenged him fight, fight with me when I was managing. He was managing the uh, San Luis Corridor. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I, I can easy going, uh, but I know who got to, who can kick my ass. I I pick, I pick two guys to fight. Like, okay, you want to fight? Let's go, Frank Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Franklin was like 98 years old and Tony La Russa. And my kid goes, Dad, that's a shame. Two Hall of Fame, old man. I said, yeah, you think you want, I want to fight those guys that can kick my butt? No, I want to fight the guys that can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. What about um, the, who brought this up? The mask. Soto, kicking the mask. Yeah, but we, we had know, somebody. We had, who was it that was on? And they were talking about when you said they were cracking out. up when when they saw that. Rich no. Hill, mate. No, is it Rich Hill? Oh, that um, happened with the foul ball. We playing the cops. And yeah, when was, yeah. When, when, when I was sitting, I can see oh, straight. Was it Dempsey? maybe? Uh, yeah, because it was, Dempster. It was Dempster. 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 I I signed it, and they uh, put in an eBay or whatever for uh, Dempster to help kids. They, I remember because when I'm sitting, I can see the ball straight up what I was, and I can I point the umpire what it was. Then I, all of a sudden, I see the mask it was in the middle, and I kicked it. Thank God I don't kick it that hard because if that mask hit somebody in the stand, 
I'm going to pay $100,000 just because I hate no, somebody. You kicked, it, you kicked it at me, you dumbass. I had to bring it to DeSoto. I was on well, track. I, don't know. I, I, I you kicked know, it to I, me, I, and I, I picked it up, and I was like, here you go, Gio. You're oh, the best. I, you can see. I even know you was in the up deck circle. And I kicked <laughs> it. And as soon as I kicked it, now, hey, listen, when we when we have horseshit games, it's almost every day. They play that stupid thing. Every time we play the Cubs, NBC Sport, they, they put it on. The funniest day, Cubs, White Sox. Rivalry. They put myself. They put, they put. They put. The, they put the fire in you. You know I me. Mean? All kind of. Yeah, say, which like, one do they show more? The fight with me, or you kicking the mask? I mean, every no, time. No, we're the same time. We're number top five. We <laughs> you, you are, <laughs> top five. We are. We always win. You know what I mean like? But it's a funny because, bro. It's just uh, nowadays you do that. It's just like hey, you know. Nowadays, nowadays, uh, you have now you manage and you call. You got to be careful. What you say, who do you say? I say stuff back in the days, like, oh my God, I really say that? I'd be, I'd be, the, is, if I say that now to the media, I, I, they will take my citizenship away. Give me your, <laughs> give me your blue passport and go back to Venezuela. We don't want you here. Out. But, uh, uh oof, boy, I, I, I go through what I say in the past about anybody, anything. Now I'm, I'm older. I learn how to deal with TV. How to deal with media? That's my job. Uh, how to say? How to not say? But I will say something. I will say I'm not going to hide behind the bush. I'm, I, I might say the better way, but I will say I'm not afraid to tell the media exactly what they need to hear. Nope, that's my and, style. And people respect the real talk. So I, I will say that. Ozzy, great catching up as always, man. You've got our vote. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Hey, AJ, is they call me? AJ, they call me. You fucking forget about the fucking talking shit show you have. You coming, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Dude, that's what? Dude, that's what? Wait, that's what, though? Yeah. Hey, you can be my bench coach. That's easy. You uh, Harold Payne was, Hero Payne was my bench coach. you be super better on bench coach than Harold Payne. <laughs> yeah, but can the bench coach have – does it have a home studio that he can bench coach virtually? No, he said I have to give up my stupid shit talking show. I said. know. I'm saying, though, but you get to do this. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 stay there because you can be yourself. The people love your show. You guys show they do. They love your show. And besides that, you made more money there than be fucking be at one o'clock at the ballpark doing shit. Now that, <laughs> now that I can get on board with. Yep. Hey, listen, nobody, we we got to let you go. But I, I, the Tim Rain story I've told people is still my all time great story. He was he was our first base coach. Remember this story? And, and he What's goes on first base, and the phone's ringing in the helmets. His yeah, was in the helmet rack, and he's coming just, first. I, and Ozzy answers it in the middle of the inning. We're hitting. He's like, "Hello," and they're looking for Rock. And they're hey, like, "No, he's going hey, first right now." And he's like, "Oh, that, he's gonna have to call you back." And he fucking. Hey, hung up. the funny thing about this, I hit the ring, the phone ring. I go, "What the fuck?" I go, "Hermy, pick the goddamn phone, goddamn it, Hermy." Go, no, I got my phone with me. Well, it's just goddamn phone ringing here. Harris is looking for a phone. Nobody. All I saw him. He went to first base. The phone ring that turn and say, Oh, he's here. Hello. Oh, that was his former wife. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, he was his former wife. Hello. Who is this? It's Ozzy. Hey, Ozzy. He's, hey, don't call later. We're in the middle of the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, the best thing. phone in the dugout. No, You're hey. not supposed to, but <laughs> no. I mean, it was like the third inning. Yeah, <laughs> hey, how about this one? We are, uh, we, first year, I managed, uh, I'm hiding team range and we have a meeting in Vegas, eight o'clock, at nine o'clock meeting. That is like two hundred people for the White Sox organization there. All of a sudden, uh, Harold Bain turn around, and go, "Your boy's not here." I look around, I said, "No, all my coaching staff here." I said, "No, we're missing somebody." Team Rain show up by eleven thirty. <laughs> <laughs> first time, first time is in the job. They go, uh, and Benji got the ass. Benji go, what the hell? I was like, come on. Go. And they motherfucker should be quiet. Go, oh, man, sorry. I'm a little late. I said, a little late? You're two and a half hours later. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. But back in the hey, day, man, we got a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It was fun to kick it back for a little bit. Obviously, we'll do it again soon. So, Isaac, we appreciate it. Thanks to the MLBPAA for 
setting this up. It's Legends Territory. If you're watching it, you can also listen to it if you type it into uh, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. And for more info on your favorite former players, yes, Ozzy, former three-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year, AJ's favorite year, go to BaseballAlumni.com, and we'll see you next time.